Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Riverhead's board meeting, regular meeting, Tuesday, May 24th, 2022. Can I have a motion to come out of um, executive session? Motion. Thank you, Matt. Could I have a second? Thank you, Colin. All in favor? Motion passes. Could we please rise for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can we please stay standing? I'd like to have a moment of silence for the Rob Elementary students in Texas, please. Thank you. Okie dokie. So, could we have the opportunity for the high school students? Can you can you check and see that if that mic is on? Please. Thank you. We're just going to share a little bit about what's been going on. So our guidance department hosted a special civil service employment presentation to all seniors through their 12th grade social studies classes today. A human resources professional from civil service presented a period long presentation in the auditorium about the many and far-reaching career opportunities one can have as a civil service employee. Our PTSO is sponsoring the senior picnic once again to be held on June 3rd. All seniors need to RSVP by tomorrow. The Town of Riverhead's Community Development Director, Don Thomas, visited several classes last week seeking student input on the Downtown Riverhead Revitalization Initiative. Students contributed with thoughtful feedback, questions, and recommendations. Our Hispanic Youth Leadership Club will be hosting a penalty kick event in conjunction with ENL Club on June 2nd and will be going on a field trip on June 13th to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Congratulations to our NJROTC Color Guard and Wind Ensemble who performed the national anthem at the Long Island Ducks game last Tuesday. Prior to the game, the two groups teamed up to honor the American Army, Marine Corps, Navy, and Air Force flags as the Wind Ensemble per performed Armed Forces on Parade. The Color Guard and Wind Ensemble helped the Ducks kick off an eventful game with the final score being 1-0. Our NJ ROTC band and kick line will be participating in Riverhead's Memorial Day Parade on Monday, May 30th. Our Blue Waves news team continues to produce news episodes based on news and events from and around our district. Please check out our episodes on the Riverhead High School section of our district's website. On Wednesday, May 18th, 2022, Riverhead High School partnered with the Riverhead Chamber of Commerce to provide students with the opportunity to attend our annual career fair on May 18th. Students met with over 25 businesses from across the east end of Long Island from various industries, including retail, camps, restaurants, and community organizations. From the Riverhead Library, Eastwind, Riverhead Building Supply, Heinz Enterprises, all the way to Amazon, students were provided with the opportunity to begin a career path or score that first summer job. Thank you to all the businesses who participated, as well as the Chamber of Commerce, who helped to make this event a success. Congratulations to our cast, pit, and crew members of Blue Mast for receiving the Judge's Choice Award for this year's Teeny Awards. They have also earned 13 nominations for the awards, which will be held here on June 5th. We are very proud to share 92% of our varsity teams have a GPA of 90 or above. As a result, Riverhead High School has earned the NYSPHSAA School of Excellence Award for the 2021-2022 school year. Are there any questions? Any questions from the board?
Not a question, but I believe this, no, we'll have one more. We have any more reports from the students before the end of the year? Do we know? This will be the last one they give. I was just going to say thank you again for your time and putting this together. If it is your last one, if not, I'll say it again next time. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Ms. Lisa, do we have any comments on the agenda? No. Anybody in the public comments on the agenda items, please? Good evening, Yolanda Thompson, Baiting Hollow. Um, I have some questions on um, under E, professional personnel, item number one, approval of contract dated 7-1-22 to June 30th, 23. The appointment of the individual to replace Sam Schneider as assistant superintendent for business. How many people were interviewed for that position? Ms. Thompson, the finalists yes. were, there were eight who were interviewed for the position. Don't mind me if I'm also reading the screen because sure. of my hearing issue. Sure, okay. absolutely. Okay, there were eight candidates in total, okay. And do you feel that the best candidate was selected? I'm having a hard time hearing, Ms. Thompson. Okay. I personally wasn't on the committee meeting. However, the committee did due diligence. And, okay, because um, I was going to ask, how rigorous was the interview and the selection process? What was involved in that? Um, I wasn't part of the committee, so I do not know what okay. that whole thing. However, I'm going to hand it over to Dr. T and let him answer, please. Okay. Uh, so after... Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. After all the resumes were submitted, um, we, uh, Dr. Kerner and I were looking through all the resumes to culminate and see who would be the best candidates okay. to interview. Uh, we had a full committee uh, with many different stakeholders on the committee. Um, and then the eight candidates were interviewed. We went through the process and the committee unanimously selected the candidate who was on the board agenda for this evening. Okay, and were there any other board members that were part of this stakeholder committee? Uh, yes, Ms. Healy was one of the board members who was on the, um, the committee, okay. the interview committee. But we do have some board members who are gonna be voting on this appointment tonight who were not part of the committee. Uh, that is correct. Uh, we also have to be very careful when we do have interview committees to not have four board members, which would constitute a quorum. Um, but every interview committee that we've had so far, we've had at least one board member to be a part of the interview committee process. Okay. okay. And the reason why I'm asking my questions is because if you do a simple Google search, um, there's quite a few articles on the person that's being appointed, their history, their background, and their track record, and it is not at all positive. So as a taxpayer and concerned citizen of the community, very concerned about the fact that you are going to appoint someone with a very obvious, not so good track record. It's in the media, it's in the paper. So um, I know I'm not the only one, I'm sure you've read the comments on the Riverhead local article. A lot of the community is not happy at all with the selection that's being made. And that's why I came out here tonight to share with you that I know as always you do whatever you want to do, but there are those of us who are watching and we will ask questions and we will express whether we agree or whether we, we do not agree with your decision. I have to say that I don't think that this decision, this appointment is in the best interest of our community and in the district. And that's just my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. Anyone else? Not seeing anybody? We're going to move on to the superintendent's report. Dr. Tornatore. Thank you, Ms. Downs. 
Uh, first, we'd like to begin by um, going through an MTSS uh, discussion and presentation. Uh, before I turn it over to Ms. Tona, I do want to let the board and the community know that uh, when I arrived at Riverhead, I noticed that uh, while it was an RTI plan, that there was not an MTSS plan uh, to support the districts moving forward. So I did uh, task Ms. Tona to uh, work with the committee. They've worked all this year and they worked very hard on putting together uh, this presentation for this evening. Uh, while the MTS plan is not finalized at this point, um, a draft was uh, shared with the Board of Education. Um, and uh, at this point, um, I will turn it over to Ms. Tona to share about uh, the process and uh, work with the committee in the presentation. Thank you, Dr. Tornatori. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, thank the Board of Education for allowing uh, myself and the committee to present this evening on the MTSS plan. MTSS stands for Multi-Tiered System of Support. And joining me this evening in the audience, and they will be joining me uh, coming up to the podium shortly, Dr. Maria Casamassa, Nicole Giganti, Jackie Gormley, Dr. Maureen Martin, Ed Thole, and Victoria Perone. So as Dr. Tornatori said, um, the MTSS plan is uh, an offshoot of our RTI plan and our AIS plan. Uh, last year when we were building the, the DSIP, the District Comprehensive Instructional Plan, we did include the MTSS work as one of our goals. So here on this slide, you see the definition of MTSS, and it is a framework to help guide us to ensure successful educational outcomes for all students. Our committee was charged with creating a cohesive K-12 plan that would address students' academic, behavioral, and social-emotional social needs. The committee also decided to take a look at attendance because student attendance is a major factor in student success in school. So on this slide, you see the names of all of the staff members who served on the committee throughout the school year. We were assisted by the Long Island Regional Partnership, and they have supported our, our district over the past several years in the work of MTSS. We also work with consultants from PLC Associates, Dr. Margie Jones Carey and Sam Feeney. And uh, those consultants and all of the members of the committee we met after school, throughout the school year, to analyze the resource, resources that are currently available for our students within our district. And as mentioned, we already have the RTI plan and the AIS plan, and those plans address academics. So an MTSS plan combines the academics with behavioral, social, emotional, and the attendance subcomponents, and all of those are new to a plan, a written plan for Riverhead. So at this time, I'd like to invite Dr. Casamassa to the podium to talk about goals and implementation. Good evening. Um, the MTS goals, MTSS goals are different for students and for educators. For students, it really allows our students to be known, to be supported in all of their academics, their personal relationships, and any of their post-secondary and lifelong outcomes. And that is really a goal, of course, of education as a whole, but specifically for this plan. For our educators, it gives us a way to support students effectively. We um, will collect data throughout the year through observation, student data on all aspects, behavior, academics, um, attendance, so that we address the needs of all of, of, the, um, of all of our students in a personalized way. The implementation process um, includes screening, a universal screening where we screen all of our students three times a year. We benchmark our students three times a year to ensure that we're, for us as educators that we're helping our students to learn. We can teach, but we need to know that our students are learning. A targeted screening, it also includes a targeted screening for any of our students who are struggling so that we can identify their area of need and then address that need through our plan. We have a tier one core instruction, which includes all of our students. So we have um, curriculum that addresses the needs of all of our students. Then we have a tier two, more targeted instruction for students who seem to be just like not quite getting it in the classroom and just need a, a little extra dose of support. They receive help usually about two to three times a week for a certain amount of hours, usually by our elementary specialists at this point. Then we also have tier three intensive instruction 
for students who have academic or behavioral deficits that are well below where they need to be. They will be um, addressed by some of our um, AIS staff and also social workers, guidance counselors to address the needs of those students. And then while we are um, giving uh, support to the tier two and tier three students, we progress monitor them throughout the year to ensure that those, the interventions that we're using are working because we don't want to do something that is not helping our students. Thank you, Dr. Casamassa. At this time, I'd like to invite Dr. Martin to the podium to talk about the relationship between MTSS and special education. Good evening, all. My name is Maureen Martin. I'm the Assistant Director for Special Education here. I also want to thank the Board of Education, the Superintendent, Christine, Lori, for the opportunity to speak tonight. I'm so fortunate every day to work with incredible educators who work tirelessly on behalf of students here on this MTSS plan. MTSS and Special Education are two plans that are complementary to each other. Similar to how a school district has math and has science, these plans absolutely complement each other. They both use data. They both use a collaborative team solving. Blasky Middle School discuss all the different tier one, tier two, and tier three supports of each student. Um, once we have that tier that we want that student to work in, the classroom teacher can work with um, AIS teachers, interventionists, and they'll develop a plan for those students that are going to need extra support. Some of the plans right now that are in place in the buildings um, K through six, we have a small group push in and pull out instruction with AIS teachers and interventionists like myself. Uh, in the middle school, we have ELAX, MathX, which is an extra AIS class, um, and the LLI program. In the high school, we also have LLI, the Blue Wave Academy, and AIS classes. The supports that we have now and um, determine what we're going to do to improve them and what programs we can add to them. Uh, this is just a little uh, graphic that's shows how the three-tiered system works and the, percent the percentages within those tiers reflect the percent of students anticipated to require instruction within each tier. Um, so they show the different tier one, about 80% of the classroom population, tier two, um, about 15, I can't really see the board, and tier three, we we're aiming for five to 10% of our students. Thank you, Ms. Gormley. And now I'd like to invite uh, high school teacher Victoria Perone to the podium to discuss the work of the Behavioral Subcommittee. Good evening, everyone. So uh, I'm a special education teacher for the district. I've been working here for over 20 years. And I was on the Behavioral Subcommittee. We, um, a lot of the behavioral supports and resources are very closely aligned to the resources and supports that you'll see in the social emotional section of this presentation. They kind of work together. Um, so with the behavioral supports, it's school-wide universal interventions that are delivered to all students at the tier one level. And I kind of cherry picked some of the things that you might be most familiar with that are um, available for all of our students. Um, we are in the process of implementing restorative practices into the district. Um, we've had PD training. We're trying to flip it in with the teachers. And people are testing out those practices. And we have a plan for that implementation. We have PBIS, which is Positive Behavior Interventions and Supports, communication apps like Classroom Dojo, Remind, for clear communication between school and home. We have um, social emotional learning lessons available at all levels, K through 12. After school activities and clubs. Um, different buildings in the district sometimes use the word citizen versus student. So we have like citizen student of the month. Um, the high school has a kindness program. And then we have child and student study teams. When we move to tiers two and three, they become increasingly more intensive, um, more in individualized for students who require more support. Um, the tier two supports could include restorative justice or practices, peer mediation, 
access to a social worker or a school psychologist, um, where there's also access to outside service providers that work very closely with the district, such as CAP and Family Service League. Um, tier three supports includes crisis intervention, behavior specialist who could develop an FBA, an FBA is a functional behavioral assessment, and that could lead to a BIP, which is a behavior intervention plan for a specific student. Um, and then there's also PINS Connect uh, Petition, which is a person in need of supervision. So those are just some of the resources that we have access to. Thank you, Ms. Perrone. At this time, I'd like to invite elementary teacher Ed Thole to the podium. He will present on the social emotional subcommittee's work. I have to raise it up a little bit. Uh, good evening to the Board of Education. Uh, I would like to thank the uh, superintendent as well, and I'd like to thank uh, Ms. Toner as well. Um, just to begin, the students are currently in the entire district are coming off a pandemic, which um, was very difficult socially and emotionally for them. So as we look into what we can do for the students, the district at the tier one level, which is where we want to provide plenty of opportunities for students to develop the appropriate social interactions with one another, we are doing an amazing job so far as a district. Uh, we have so much at the elementary level, so much at the middle school and the high school level. Just some things that we highlighted are um, Rethink Ed, uh, play days for students that, of course, as Ms. Perrone mentioned, the PBIS matrix. Uh, we have student um, emotional lessons going on in the classroom. I see in my school alone in Riley, we have, I'm from Riley, by the way, we have a lot of students doing, uh, we're doing daily check-ins with students. We are constantly checking the social and emotional being of them. We, it's so important that we keep driving this home. We have a student council going on. We have a kindness challenge, growth mindset constantly being talked about. We have extra social workers now. We have just, there's a lot of support in place. The CAP lessons, uh, we have in our school uh, a fourth grade play. Um, in the high school, uh, Ms. Perrone brought up this PS I Love You Day. That was actually throughout the whole district, but she was just, I was collegially talking with her and she was saying that this is just continuing to grow. So, and it's a continuation. So it's just, you can see there's so much going on. There was a national day of silence. In many of our schools, we have started to use what's called the culturally responsive classroom, which is character education. Every month, we focus on a particular character, such as courage, uh, support, um, determination, uh, just honesty, compassion. These are so important as we um, develop it, especially I see it from the younger ages. So I'm hoping that as we as the elementary um, teachers start to really focus and develop this, it will continually grow to the middle school and the high school. Uh, there needs to also, in addition to uh, what we're doing in the school um, area, be open communication that's constantly ongoing between parents and the stakeholders. The home to school connection is so important. Um, we had parent assemblies, there's parent university, the PTO and SEPTA and just all this communication that we have, we want to really continue. So again, at the tier one, as a district, we are excelling, uh, monitoring the social media. This actually, I was able to attend Ryan's story, and we, this is so important, just saying the home and school uh, connection, encouraging socialization with peers, and teaching appropriate social skills by limiting the social media, um, and trying to encourage productive uh, communication. Tier two and tier three levels. This is where, where as a district we're coming together and developing and implementing. We need to have these small group discussions, make sure that they're taking place when opportunities arise. We need to focus on relevant issues to really keep our students engaged and just um, moving towards independence. 
So uh, we, we have something called the Lunch Bunch. Uh, we have opportunities where students can come back and just have small discussions with their classmates. Again, the importance of keeping consistency and just encouraging students, go out and play, have a good time, be with your friends. So student success, I leave you with this message. Student success depends on motivation, creativity, determination, and student choice. Allowing students to have that choice into what they need to do to develop themselves as productive adults will only help us to really meet their social emotional needs in the classroom and in the school abroad. Thank you. Thank you to the Board of Ed. Thank you, Mr. Thole. And now I'd like to invite Nicole Giganti, Elementary Guidance Counselor, to share the work of the Attendance Subcommittee. My apologies, I have to lower it a little bit. Okay, sorry about that. Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much. I appreciate this opportunity. Uh, Ms. Tona, I appreciate the invitation to be part of this committee because it was such important work. Our subcommittee focused on attendance, and I want to thank my subcommittee members, uh, Ms. G. Marie Mazzafaro, uh, Mr. Evan Philcox, Ms. Terry Messina, and Ms. Yvette Cortez, who all represented different areas of the district. Myself, I am a school counselor uh, at Pulaski Street School, and I also work at Phillips Avenue and Roanoke. So together, we were able to bring everything together from all of the levels from K through 12. When we looked at attendance, we looked at the MTS plan as a whole. Um, this plan not only addresses academics, but also behavior, social emotional learning, and this attendance piece. Why? Because they're all connected. We feel that our part in this subcommittee was so important because if a student is not in school, we cannot educate them. If they cannot take advantage of all the resources and opportunities that were listed in the first three focus areas. We took careful consideration of how the attendance impacts students at each level. From the bottom up, students who are not engaged in school miss out in learning their fundamental skills. It negatively impacts their social and emotional development. They miss content knowledge and required seat time for graduation. In addition, they lose a sense of belonging because they are prohibited from participating in the after school activities during these absences and they are not here to have that sense. When we looked at it, we looked at the board's policy, the 5100, about attendance, and we looked at what the requirements are to be looked at for identifying students at risk. The board policy identifies numbers, specific prescribed numbers. We had a very in-depth, lengthy, couple hour long conversation about this and the, op the opposing thought of using percentages. When you use percentages, this captures students at risk throughout the entire school year, no matter what point of the school year you are in. So for example, in September, if you have a student who's absent for one to two days in the month of September, they're going to be flagged because one to two days during that first month is considered excessive and it gets them into the next tier. And that next tier just gives an eye on them to make sure that we're monitoring who they are and what is going on with them. If you take it out to the first quarter at the end of November, that 10%, which would be level two, they would have to be absent for five to six days. And then going on to the second quarter, it would be nine to 10 days absence. In some cases, the numbers that are prescribed in the board policy reflects these numbers are being too low to identify them. But here, this allows us to monitor them throughout the school year using these percentages. <clears throat> the interventions that we looked at really kind of encompass everything that was already spoken about in academic, behavior, and social emotional because these areas focus on increasing student engagement. And they do so by providing a sense of belonging. They do so by increasing the student confidence. If academically you're, in, you're supporting them to do better, they are going to gain their own self-confidence. If you're allowing all of these other PBIS, the restorative practices, the after-school clubs and sports, that is providing them a sense of belonging, that sense of community that they need that will motivate them to show up in school. In each of the tiers, we also identified staff members that would be important support systems throughout each intervention. Now, these interventions are 
when, we identi when you identify a student who is at risk, who is going to be there to identify it and address it? And then make sure that these other interventions on the other three areas are being implemented. So the staff would be administrators, teachers, social workers, guidance counselors, school psychologists, and the school nurse. Those are predominantly, that's not everybody, but predominantly those would be the ones identified. When you're looking at the community, because we have to take into consideration that we need to partner and team with the community to ensure that our students are showing up at school. The community includes the families. It is important that we communicate and develop these relationships with the families to help get these students into school. The CAP Social Worker, Family Service League, and the Neighborhood Aides. <clears throat> Doing all this will provide a round intervention to make sure that students are here to get everything that they need so that they can be successful and a successful part of the Riverhead community. It takes a village to educate a child, and I believe Riverhead Central School District is the village that can do that for every child. Thank you, Ms. Giganti. And now to talk about next steps in the process, I'll invite Dr. Casamasa back up to the podium. Thank you. So looking ahead, this is a plan and it's a living document, so we're always going to be looking at it, reviewing it. So next year, 2022 to 2023, our plan is to work collabor collaboratively, look at the programs that we currently are implementing, pilot plans that we may need where we see we have to have gaps that we ha don't have plans. Um, or in action steps four, we are going to have buildings create their MTSS teams. We are going to then um, begin to continue to meet and to review and to always progress monitor what is going on to see if it's working. And then for 2023, 2024, our plan is to fully implement the MTSS. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Casamasa, and thank you to all the committee members who spoke this evening so eloquently and passionately about your areas, representing your subcommittees very well. Uh, kudos to all of you uh, and to our administrators that are here this evening in support of the plan. Um, the Board of Education, we thank you for the opportunity to share this information with you. Uh, it was a large task to put together an MTSS plan. We have the academic pieces, um, which always could use more uh, review and additional support and resources, but bringing in the behavioral, social, emotional, and the attendance components is, is a shift for the district in a good direction, and it supports all the other initiatives that are happening currently. So um, like we, we shared, this is a framework, it's a start. It gives us the opportunity to use that framework and fill in gaps, as Dr. Casamasa said. So um, I know you have the draft of that plan, so I encourage you to, to take a deeper dive into that and um, let us know what, what you envision your next steps to be. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Toner. Thank you, everybody. Okie dokie, we're gonna move on to consent agenda. What? You go ahead with doing consent agenda. I can't hear you. She wants to ask questions on the plan. You wanna ask questions? Go right ahead. If, you, if you'd like to ask a question about the MTS. Go ahead, Virginia. Um, could you just clarify, so the, our RTI plan that we have now, is this, is it's part of the MTSS or is it gonna be all, all part of this one plan? Is that the goal, is that it's RTI, the PBIS all together? The RTI plan is required by SED, so it's prescribed as to what's included. So we did talk about moving into 2022-23, attaching the RTI plan to this plan, because it is important to have um, more specifics on the academic side. So um, as next year goes through and, and the committee continues to meet and decides on there might be some shifts in some of the resources, that RTI plan could very well be embedded right into the MTSS plan. It's too early for us to, to be at that point because we don't have all of the resources in place to meet the needs of the students on all three tiers. In some areas, we're, we're heavy in, in tier two. In other areas, we're heavier in tier three. Tier one um, could always 
use additional uh, supports because that's where all the students are, are receiving um, instruction and support. Um, yeah, because I was just, uh, with the MTSS plan, um, does it have to be, because I know that it's like, it's universal. They say tier one is 80, then tier two is the 15%, and tier three is 5%. But can we, um, you know, craft it closer to what our district is dealing with right now and saying this is where we're at, and then the next year, and then, you know, as we're monitoring it, because we might find that, like, our tier one, especially, like, with reading, we're, we're not at 80%. And that's just a reality. It's just with what, you know, we're, we're dealing with. And are we allowed to be flexible that way, or we have to show 80, 15, 5? We had that exact conversation as a full committee um, quite often. And we did have consultants with us that were experts in the area. And we have to look at the 80, 15, 5 for the three tiers as goals for the district, because ultimately that's where we want to get to, where only 5% of our students need tier 3 interventions. You're absolutely correct, we're not there yet. But I think it's important in the framework to have that as the goal, as something that we're working towards. Okay. And um, so with this, because for, just for me going forward with some of the screeners, I would love to see um, uh, better screening for tier two and tier three, um, uh, f especially for reading. Uh, so I, I guess this is all like a living document. We, they'll be working on all of that. Yeah, the discussion was to look at some uh, products for next year in a piloting phase and then let the committee and those that were using those pilots come together and decide which ones they like the best um, and which ones meet the needs of the students the best and then embed those into the plan for 23, 24. Okay. And, and thank you, Mr. Thole, because I, I really appreciated what you, ha what you had to say and it was um, especially what the, the district is doing and and uh, and your comments about what the what the kids need. So thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Tona, and thank you to everyone on the committee for all the work yes. you've been doing. Um, I have um, just a quick little question. I mean, for one of the four components of the MTSS plan being social emotional. Um, I mean, definitely social emotional learning has kind of become a political buzzword recently, um, un unduly, um, and. I was very happy to see so many examples in all four of the areas of exactly what the district is doing in these, in these particular fields. And actually, in the social-emotional uh, section, Mr. Thal had mentioned um, the National Day of Silence. I, I'd heard some you know, grumblings in, with some parents and some people in the community specifically about um, that program. Um, would Ms. Tona or Mr. Thal, if either of you would mind just explaining what that is and exactly how that ties into? I'd like to social. invite Ms. Perone to come up to talk about that briefly oh, um, because the high school took care of the, that day of silence. Sorry it, to put you on the spot. That's okay. <laughs> We're fine. <laughs> um, so it comes out of the LBGT uh, club that we have, after school club, and it is to target, um, it's an anti-bullying campaign for people who are targeted for being LBGT. So it was a, they get a card, the students who want to participate, and the card just explains that they're going to uh, participate by being silent for the day. And at certain times, they start their, their day of silence to kind of highlight the number of people who are bullied or discriminated against because of their sexuality. Excellent. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, I've just got a message saying that YouTube crashed, so I don't think we're streaming live on. It's good now? OK. Dr. Tornatori, please continue with your report. Uh, thank you, Ms. Downs. Uh, so uh, what is our goal with this MTSS plan? Certainly our goal is to be able to uh, provide the supports needed for all of our students and in turn 
Uh, the long-term goal is to, of course, increase our graduation rate and to be removed from the target list. Uh, and one way to do that is to have a solid MTSS plan so that we are able to provide the academic and behavioral supports for all of our students. So again, I want to thank the committee for the work that you put in this year. Uh, I was able to pop on and off with some of uh, the, the meetings that you had to, to listen in, and a lot of great questions, a lot of great work, and thank you, Ms. Tone, and the team for, uh, for putting that together. Uh, so just a few other items I did want to share. I do want to thank the community again for passing uh, the budget um, so that we are able to provide many more um, opportunities for our students next year. Um, I was going to share out about our uh, uh, scholar athletes, uh, but our high school students did such a great job of that, but I want to recognize uh, the amount of work and dedication that they put in. Um, last evening, um, along with um, a good amount of our administrators, um, I uh, attended the uh, SCOPE's um, uh, 21st Annual School District Awards Dinner uh, last night, where uh, some of our recipients were uh, Miss Downs, so congratulations. Yeah. Um, and Dr. Kerner and Mr. Graham, so they did receive uh, awards last night. And I want to thank Ms. Husky for uh, for attending the uh, the dinner as well. It was really a great representation to show uh, all the achievements uh, with our team members at Riverhead. Um, I had the opportunity of attending the middle school and then the high school spring concerts. I have to tell you, um, the high school spring concert, I was absolutely flawed at how amazing it was. Uh, the orchestra, every single bow was perfect. Uh, the chorus, um, when they came out, and if I'm pronouncing it correctly, started the their portion with Wangle. I, I was just absolutely amazed by that. Um, and then when the band came on and they had their whole portion where they were uh, doing the percussion uh, movement and the percussionists came up front, it was just absolutely amazing. So uh, a true pleasure to be able to, uh, to witness that. Um, I also want to, uh, even though our um, seniors did mention this, uh, I do want to recognize um, Matt Roth because he was officially accepted the scholarship to the uh, U.S. Naval Academy and Marina Ronzoni accepted uh, her nomination to the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy, so excellent work for them as well. Um, I also want to share out that um, the Aquabog um, outdoor learning space in honor of Ms. Uh, Stromsky. Uh, the de dedication was Friday. Ms. Downs and I attended that. Um, it was quite moving. Um, and um, I have to tell you, the students did a great job. The teachers did a great job. And one particular student um, played uh, her violin. Um, and it was just amazing. So that was absolutely fantastic. Uh, in addition at Aquabog, the first graders uh, received a visit from a local professional race car driver, Eric Goodale, who brought his uh, race car through the bus loop and talked to the students about he teamwork and math, uh, to, which helped uh, him to win the race. So I thought that that was very interesting. Um, Mr. Colhane, um, Mr. O'Hara, Ms. Parletto, and I uh, attended the Long Island Ducks game where um, our students performed uh, at that game, so we we're very, very proud of, of their work. Uh, I just want to remind everybody again that there is a school day on May 27th. We did send out that information, but due to the snow day, school will be in session that day. Uh, Ms. Downs and I attended the Belltown event this Saturday. It was completely moving. Um, it was a fantastic uh, dedication for the history of Belltown and recognition. Uh, recognition. Uh, and I want to thank um, Marilyn Banks Winter for all the work that she did in putting that together. It was truly a moving event. Um, Mr. O'Hara and I attended the valedictorian and salutatorian recognition at San Marich's High School with our local legislatures, uh, members, um, and parents as well. And the great thing about that was is that the students were asked questions from the uh, legislative members, and they entered into a really robust conversation during that event. It was absolutely fantastic. Uh, and the last item I want to share is throughout the year, I've been holding student advisory committee meetings each month with students from Pulaski, the middle school and high school. We've been rotating students so that I've been speaking to students from all different backgrounds and I made it very clear uh, in meeting with the principals that I did not just want to speak to honors and AP level students, I wanted to speak to all students. So I want to thank our principals for really presenting uh, to me the opportunity to meet with students um, in those buildings and we had really great conversations throughout the year. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tornatori. Okay, we'll try this again. 
We'll move on to consent agenda. Madam President, I'd like to pull out number one on the professional uh, on, on letter E? Yes. Number one on letter E? Okay. So we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put letter number one last. Yes. We put it last after G. Can we do that? Consent is A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna vote on A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and we're gonna pull out H, which is going to be number one from letter E. So consent agenda, I have a motion for A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Thank you, Matt. Second? Second. Thank you, Colin. Any questions? Not seeing any. All in favor? Motion passes. Okay, consent agenda, letter H. Could I have a, a motion? Motion. Thank you, Colin. Could I have a second? Thank you, Therese. Any questions, cares, or concerns? Not seeing any. All in favor? Any nay? Did you get that, Lisa? Thank you. We're gonna move on to new business. Letter A, approval of annual employment contracts. Can I have a motion? Thank you, Therese. Can I have a second? Thank you, Colin. Any questions, cares, concerns? Not seeing any. All in favor? Nay? Are you vote? You abstained? Okay, so Chris is abstaining. <coughs> Let it be amendment to appointment of impartial hearing Officers, can I have a motion? motion? Thank you, Matt. Can I have a second? Thank you, Virginia. Any questions? Not seeing any, all in favor? Motion passes. Let us see, approval of tax anticipation note. Could I have a motion, please? Motion. Thank you, Chris. Can I have a second? Thank you, Therese. Any questions? Not seeing any. All in favor? Motion passes. Letter D, approval of intermunicipal agreement. Can I have a motion? Motion. Thank you, Colin. Can I have a second? second? Thank you, Matt. Any questions? Not seeing any. All in favor? Motion passes. Letter E, approval of technology plan. Can I have a motion, please? Motion. Thank you, Chris. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you, Virginia. Any questions? No questions, no. but a comment. Th thank you, Mr. Hines, for the plan and the time, effort um, that you put into it. Thank you. That goes for everyone on this board. Can we have um, all in favor? Motion passes. Approval of shared service contract. Could I have a motion, please? Motion. Thank you, Colin. Could I have a second? Thank you, Therese. Any questions, cares, or concerns? Not seeing any. All in favor? Motion passes. Letter G, approval of memorandums of agreement. Can I have a motion? Motion. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, second, Colin. Any questions, cares, concerns? Not seeing any. All in favor? Motion passes. 
approval, letter H, approval of new contract awards. Could I have a motion? motion. Thank you, Matt. Can I have a second? Thank you, Virginia. Any questions, cares, or concerns? Not seeing any. All in favor? Motion passes. Letter I, approval of contract. Can I have a motion, please? Well, Thank you, Matt. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you, Virginia. Questions, cares, concerns? This is Mr. to- Mr. Doerr? Oh, I'm sorry. Is this, to, we, is this to move us down this street? Approval of this contract. Yeah, is this what the moving in store? Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. can't be done in-house? So uh, because there are so many heavy items, uh, which would be too heavy for our uh, team to be able to move everything, uh, those items will be um, handled by the moving service. But then anything else uh, in addition to that, um, we do want to offer to, uh, to our team in-house to be able to, uh, to complete, including moving the, all the computer equipment. We're using a little bit of both because they, the, our in-house can't move some of the stuff on their own. They're going to need some help. Okay. Any more questions? All in favor? Motion passes. First reading of the revised board policies. Can I have a motion? Motion. Thank you, Colin. Could I have a second? Thank second. you, Virginia. Any questions, cares, or concerns? Um, just, so 1400 says public complaints, and then the attachment, it says public comments. So is it public comments or public complaints? It, it's complaints, isn't it? It's complaints. Okay, just the file attachment had something different. Any questions? Any more questions? All in favor? Go. Thank you, Mr. Tor. All in favor? Motion passes. K, approval of dis disposal of surplus equipment. Can I have a motion? Motion. Thank you, Colin. Could I have a second? Sorry. Thank you, Matt. Any questions? I'm not seeing any. All in favor? Motion passes. I have a walk on here. Walk on resolution. How about the donations? The donations. Should I do that first? You can do, you can do L and then come back to, to Okay, do L and then come back, okay. Approval of donations. Can I have a motion, please? Motion. Thank you, Chris, can I have a second? Second. Thank you, Colin. Questions, cares, concerns, comments? No. Yes, Thank Colin. You. Yeah, I wanna just briefly comment on the uh, the chalkboard, mm -hmm. um, which I mean, I know Ms. Downs is aware of this. I'm not certain kind of other people in the community who are aware of this. Um, so many of our school buildings are very old. And one building in particular, the very first high school that we had no longer exists because it burned down in the 1940s. Um, it was originally a three-story structure right next to Roanoke Avenue where the the uh, lot. where the parking lot currently is. Um, and you can still sometimes you know, see little remnants in the plague, or at least when I was there, little remnants of when they would have bonfires, either Roanoke and the high school days. Um, so this is really great to be able to have you know, a little bit of our history. The bell next to Pulaski Street just kind of sitting there on its own. That was originally in the bell tower of that high school. Right. Um, so being able to have this, um, thank you very much to Mr. Shimada for donating it. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about it myself. So any other, any other questions, comments? Not seeing any, all in favor? Motion passes. Okay, so we're gonna make this one letter M. I'm gonna read it first before, do I have to ask? Read it first and then ask. 
Okay, so I read it first and then I ask for a motion. So be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby determined that based upon present circumstances and based upon requests from its employees, Junith, Junith shall be a day off on June 20th, 2022. This day off is expressly limited to the 2021-2022 school year, and it is not intended to bond, bind the Board of Education in future years. Can I have a motion? Thank you, Chris. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you, Colin. Any questions? All in favor? Motion passes. Opportunity for board members. Do we have any committee reports? Nope. Okay. Any comments from board members? Anybody have anything to say? Mr. Palmer? A quick little thing, if I haven't spoken enough already tonight. Um, just like to thank um, you know, Mr. O'Hara, Mr. Rodkamp, and Ms. Nitty um, for all of the support that they've given to the Riverhead Blue Masks. As our student representatives mentioned earlier, um, we got 13 teeny award nominations, and it's a silly name, um, but it really means a lot for theater clubs all across, stretches even farther than the East End into central uh, Long Island. Um, just seeing that recognition for our theater students um, makes me very proud as a Blue Masks alumna, uh, alumnus, and also the fact that that Judge's Choice Award is something that's given to usually a scene or a musical number that really like stands out. The fact that the entire cast got that award, I think that's the only time I, I know that they've given that award to an entire production. Really, really proud um, of Riverhead and just a really fantastic production and thank you to the entire arts department in this district for everything that they've been doing. Thank you, anyone else? Mr. Dorr. Along those lines, um, I attended the Art in Action um, Friday, and it was great seeing all the artwork from our students. There was some really, really good work, um, and it was just nice going around and seeing all the hard work that the students have put in. And uh, thank you to the art teachers. Um, you guys are doing a great job. Nobody else? RCFA. Good evening, uh, Gregory Wallace, RCFA president. Uh, one, I'd like to thank the public for passing the budget. We appreciate your support of our students. And we'd like to congratulate, and I believe they're all here, Jennifer Bowes, Pamela Joyce, Lisa Lindsay, and Jennifer Weintraub on their tenure appointments. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Okay, opportunity for the public. Um, Ms. Lisa, you got some comments? Can you read one and then we'll go like that. How many do you have, hon? Four. Four. Put, yeah. Remember, these are also timed. Okay. Don't, yeah. Okay. The first is from Allison Matway from Wading River. I am disheartened to learn of the decision not to waive the do no harm policy for regions this year. Given the trauma our students have faced this year and the multiple interruptions of their education due to COVID, I truly think it would have been in the best interest of our students to waive the policy of counting these tests for 20% or as much as the entire quarter of school. Personally, my daughter has had multiple teachers absent for extended times, including one very recently as they began their Regents Review. This puts an unfair disadvantage on the students who missed a week of review instruction, while other students did not. Given the fact that the test will not impact the teachers again this year due to the suspension of APPR, I think the committee who made this decision should have extended the same courtesy to their students. We talk a lot about social and emotional health and well-being, yet sometimes our actions don't match our words. I truly hope that this policy waiver can be reconsidered, but remain terribly disappointed with this decision. Okay, thank you. Mr. Roth, you wanted to get up? 
Good evening, everybody. How are you? Uh, Jeremy Rand. I have two kids at Phillips Avenue. I just wanted to come down and congratulate everybody sitting here tonight. Uh, we passed. We got the yes vote. Um, to Lori and, and Matt, there was never a doubt. Really wasn't. We know who we want leading Riverhead, um, and the voters spoke. So congratulations to both of you guys. Thank um, you. And then to Mrs. Healy, I just was reading this about you. Mrs. Healy, you have eight children. You're an active member in the special PTA, serving as a treasurer. You're a former financial planner and education consultant. You have a bachelor's degree from Stony Brook University as a certified financial planner and graduate courses in business from Adelphi University. Is that correct? Well, see, I think you're... But you're, but you're, you're pretty qualified to, to, to be up here looking after us. I just wanted to make that point, that we have some really qualified people doing a great job keeping an eye on things. So if you just go to the website, you could read. She's, she's got a lot of good things going. So I think we're in pretty good hands of whatever else is going on here. So sometimes you don't have to pay attention to the critics. You just keep it home and take care of your business. Uh, we all know why I'm here. Um, it's a pretty good reason here. Uh, we need Mr. Crump back. I was looking on the dates, uh, 21, 22, and 23, 24 is the last week of school in June. Uh, not gonna be busy at that high school. We got tests going on. I think Mr. Crump can come back for that final week. We're gonna believe in our beloved Mrs. Rogers. Um, you know, we'd really nice to have him there and permanently back. Uh, I know there's a lot of things going on in this world uh, and we would really certainly like to have more security around Riverhead. Um, you know, I don't want to talk about whether we should be armed or we shouldn't be armed, but uh, I hope we're looking at all avenues of approach to keep our kids safe here at Riverhead. Uh, this is a great place to grow up. It's very safe. Uh, I feel safe sending my kids here, um, and the security does a great job. Uh, but tell you what, we need that Mr. Crump back at our school. Uh, so if we can get him back for those dates, and Mrs. Rogers can get out of here, she could leave on her little motorcycle and be retired and go hang out with her friends and uh, know that Mr. Crump is back at Phillips Avenue keeping an eye on her kids. Uh, that would be really wonderful. And again, congratulations to everybody. And thank you to uh, Riverhead Local, that little article that we needed this vote. Uh, that surely helped. And uh, we did need it, and we got it. So we should all be very proud tonight. We should hold our heads high, and uh, the future looks bright because that vote didn't just pass by one; it voted by, it got passed by quite a bit. So whatever you guys are doing, keep doing it, and let's go. Uh, Mr. Crump, back 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th. What do you say? Mr. Looks pretty good. Mr. Rand, yes. I'd like to pass your question off to Dr. Tornatori. Yes. Do you have an answer? Yes, I do. Uh, Mr. Rand, if you remember the last, the last board meeting I did share with you yes. uh, that I would be speaking to Mr. Culhane. We have spoken that Mr. Crump will be back for those last days with the students That's and with uh, Ms. Rogers. So That's they wonderful. will be able to uh, to engage and, and wish her off uh, in her retirement yeah. and to wish the students well uh, for their summer as well. Well, thank you for that. But um, I just want to let you know, we want Mr. Crump back next year. Okay, and I'm not going anywhere because I like this. I don't have the kids. I get dressed up. I stop for McDonald's. I get a little frappe. I'm enjoying these board meetings. I'm getting to know people. So, you know, we're gonna need him back full time. You know, please. We you that high school. We're, we're getting there, man. We really are. We're seeing your good work. We are. We know that. Um, a lot of times you guys hear all this mumbling from the back, you know, and, and people, sometimes you got to put the muffles on and go to work and not worry about what people are thinking and saying. Just keep in mind, the kids are our goal here. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Thank Mary. you, guys. Have a good night. Ms. Lisa, you got another comment? Time it. Okay. The next is from Christine Smith from Aquabog. I'm concerned that our district is not taking our students into concern with the state regents exams. There are so many factors and stressors and this one test should not determine their whole school year. It makes me so sad that our district would not put the do not harm policy in place. I would like to think, I would like that you please consider your decision again. Thank you, anyone from the public? Not seeing anybody? You can continue, Lisa.
Okay. The next is from Nina Late time from Riverhead. It. What? Yeah. Make sure you time in it. New York State Education put a letter on May 16th stating that the department does not require or recommend the use of Regents exams as part of a student's final grade. I think Riverhead needs to adopt a do not harm policy again this year. My son has had many teachers out this year due to COVID. I am sure many students have had to stay home because of it also. I am a teacher and I have seen far more absences this year due to COVID than last year due to the highly contagious nature of the variants this year. Regents are quickly approaching. I am urging you to act quickly to make this change. Thank you. And anyone from the public? Ms. Lisa? Okay, last one. This one is from Robin D'Andrea from Southampton. Please vote to exclude Regents exams from our children's final grade. The pandemic has set back our children's cognitive and emotional growth. They are still playing catch up from missing school in 2020 and the Regents will only serve to punish our students who have not had the adequate education to perform well on these tests. The Department of Education advised schools not to count the Regents exam. Department reminds district and schools that while grading policies are locally determined, the inclusion of regions examination scores in the calculation of the final course grades is neither required nor recommended. That's from Betty A. Rose, Commissioner. Please follow the advice of New York Department of Ed and countless Riverhead families and do not count the regions exam. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Dr. Tonatori, you had something that you wanted to add? Uh, yes, so um, I would like to again congratulate our staff members who received tenure because it is quite an achievement, so congratulations. Um, and I also wanted to um, explain um, the uh, walk-on about Juneteenth. So this year the district did um, have uh, students were off for Juneteenth, but staff were required to come in and we were going to have a superintendent's conference day. However, since it is a state and federal holiday, uh, the board did vote this evening to have school closed on that day for all staff as well. And then in next year's calendar, uh, well, it is also closed for, uh, for the district. Um, I did have many staff members who um, came to speak to me and with their concerns regarding that, so I did want to bring that to the board, and I want to thank the board for, uh, for voting uh, for that as well. Uh, the last time I, I wanted to share is I want to congratulate Mr. Galena. He's here tonight. He's going to be our new uh, facilities director, so we want to welcome him to the Blue Waves family. Anything else? Not seeing anything? Adjournment. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Thank you, Matt. Second. Thank you, Colin. All in favor? Motion passes. Good evening, everyone. help support the River Central School District YouTube channel by subscribing. If you are not already subscribed to this channel, please be sure to push that subscribe button and click the bell to receive notifications. Thank you.